So hi, uh, thank you for your enthusiasm. And uh, uh, this this talk is about D three JS and Python. And so um, many of you are actually um, have has anyone heard of D three JS yet? Can you raise your hand? Okay, show hand. Okay, some people. Okay, so um, D three JS is a JavaScript library that is used on the browser, and that's what my talk will be uh, will be about. Uh, so one of the core cool ideas about this talk is actually like before I jump into the free jazz, I want you to <coughs> talk a bit about what we usually think about visualization. Usually when we talk about visualization, it's more like, uh, it's a bit like the public relationship department in a company. It's like when you have done all your work and you, you have done all your research and you're trying to deliver your research to the outsider, then you're trying to make your graph pretty so that it can deliver. That's the traditional way when we think about visualization. It's more about like communicating to others about your result. But what I'm trying to uh, discuss about with you today is an other idea about visualization. Uh, visualization more as a mean of uh, for for yourself to really understand what your data is about. So not so much about uh, communication, but more about for you to more understand your data. So in English, we have a saying that we say, like, I see. We use the saying, I see, usually when you really understand something, you will say, I see, because like in your head, you actually can see the re relationship between different things. And like fundamentally, for you to really uh, understand things, you must to see first. And um, you, you must wonder, like, Py Python has already a very powerful um, <coughs> application for visualization, why would I need like a JavaScript library to help me on that? It's mostly because like uh, JavaScript is very, very like interactive and it's like very um, expressive on visualization. To give you an example, so this is the work I've been doing for um, Tianxia Zhazi, it's uh, the Common West magazine here in uh, Taiwan. And uh, this is done by different JS. And the idea here is to bind each data to a visualization representation. So for example, here is actually a data of a different company, the top uh, company in Taiwan. <coughs> so we bind each rect to rectangle to one of the data, one of the data of the company. So you can see like uh, this is the top a company in finance industry, and this is the um, bottom of the finance industry, the top, uh, which is actually still good. So what you can do is, uh, here we are finding the position of the right as a uh, representation, but you can also find different things. For, for example, you want to see, uh, even that Guo Tai is the first one, you want to see what is the percentage of Guo Tai within the industry. So you can do that, you can choose as to be free to change the size. So for example, you can do this, and here different um, different size will mean like the, the different value, here is the revenue, so the different revenue within in each industry. Uh, so you can see the different, uh, you can also see like each uh, company as compared to everyone. So you can draw another map like this. And you can also here, uh, here Gotai you can see is the size of the um, of bigger than Fubang, but uh, Nansen and Fubang add together will be bigger than Gotai. So uh, this is basically the different thing you can do with D3. That is uh, that you can see the transition is very smooth. The interactivity actually help you see the data. You can also here this is ranked by revenue. You can also rank by capital, and this the size change uh, like uh, very fast. So just this is just the idea of what D3 do. D3 JS is a library that is very powerful of binding data to the visual uh, visual representation. Um, and it's interactive. And uh, you might feel that this is uh, not really needed in Python, but that's what my talk will be about. Um, okay, so the second one is uh, I'm going to talk about how D3JS can play around with uh, Python. So this basically two main idea. The first idea is that Python is very good for scraping data. So we can use Python to get um, a data source. 
and then using JavaScript to display it like on the browser. Uh, the second idea is more interesting. It's using Python and JS together as a way of uh, analyzing data. And uh, you might find it interesting because like Python basically can do everything. Like you can analyze very large scale data. And in JavaScript, if you use a browser to run JavaScript, you only can uh, input 10 megabytes of data. And 10 megabytes is like very, 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 very small. And you might wonder why, why would I work with JavaScript which has that limitation? And Python has already a lot of uh, great data analysis tool. Why would I build my interface using JavaScript? And that's actually the second part of my talk will be about that. So first part, using Python as a way of scrapping data, I can show you, um, um, so it's actually really simple. I'm going to show, I don't think it's this one. Let me check, it's already. So, um, so this is, oh, I actually have it here. So this is a sample Python uh, code that is using the JS library. Um, the JS library actually uh, is developed, one of the author that developed JS library actually is going to have a talk in PyCon right now. And um, so basically the JS library, uh, it go to the trace uh, exchange <coughs> in Taiwan and scrap the different um, ticket you want. So uh, for example, here is one ticket of a stock and you can just code this, uh, and you can just code this library. So for example, you can easily code this library <coughs> and the result will get into a folder. For example, here you can see like, this is uh, just scrapped right now. And this is the data it come back. So it's, it's the date, it's the opening, opening price, closing price, and the different value you have in stock. So this, all this was just scrapped by uh, this, uh, this, this Python code. And then you have this CSV file and then that is scrapping your data and then you can have another uh, visualization on top of it. This is, uh, so, um, so you can see it read the CSV file, it render, and uh, like this is very simple when you can do um, this as well in Python. So this is uh, actually very simple. And you can also actually uh, write a script that is like constantly having a loop and that's constantly updating this data, dumping the data as CSV to the uh, same path and having the same visualization. And um, so, uh, and, but basically it's the same. So scrapping data is one of the strengths, but as it's not the main reason like uh, I'm having this talk today. The main reason I'm having this talk is uh, this. So before I show you what this is, let me explain a bit. Um, so this is actually this. So what is this? So um, this is a list of, um, for example, of IDs and a list of XY position. So XY position can be longitude latitude, and this is a, a list of different IDs. And the interesting about thing about this, uh, and there's a lot of ID, there's uh, you can say a lot of ID. The interesting thing about this data set is actually two different customers approach me with this similar kind of data uh, recently. Uh, they, they are from different industry, but they all have this very similar data they want to analyze this. Um, so um, when I'm showing this, you can think about the idea if you are trying to use Python to analyze it. What's a good representation or what's the way to look into the data? If you draw this data because you have X, Y, axis, if you draw the data all together on a 2D uh, platform, you will look like this. There's a lot of paths, and this is actually, I believe, like a thousand, uh, one, 2,000 paths. And this is only from one day worth of data. So imagine you have a lot of database of one month. That would be a lot more than that. So um, of course, you can do some filtering. So you want to see perhaps less. Uh, or maybe adding some content. So for example, one thing I'm sure you can do in Python is this, is you try to add an overlay to it. So overlay meaning, for example, this is longitude latitude data. 
and you try to overlay it on the map. So you can see actually this is the cell phone path and you can see where these people come each every day. But here is still a mess and you can't really see into that. So um, that's coming back to the other thing I'm trying to say is like uh, with JavaScript with a very powerful interaction, this very powerful interaction will really help you to see your data and then understand your data. So one of the other thing you can do again <coughs> with all these paths is you binding a simple mouse over event that will help you when you mouse over here will show actually what kind of path it is. So this actually help a bit, right? So you have the original mess that was like kind of especially uh, spaghetti go, and then here you have is like one one pass that you can see. What will be more helpful is to understand where this path start and where this path end, right? Again, with interaction, you can do this uh, by binding like mouse click event to it, so that uh, you actually show the different uh, passing. So you get a sense of how this path is uh, is going. <coughs> uh, even though the the data is a bit. Um, large. So uh, once we have uh, developed this uh, different uh, view or different aspect of the data set, we come up with more idea of what, how we can simplify this data. Especially, we come up with a visualization that is look like uh, this. And this is basically the same graph as uh, this one, but when mm -hmm. you see this one, for example, let me show it again. Um, So you feel that if this is an area, it seems that some people are interested in the different location of this area. And uh, so it's, it seems like this path look like um, maybe there's, um, <coughs> look, in this path, it enter here in the top left, it go to the top right, and it go back to the top left. So you want to capture this kind of uh, movement abstractively. What thing you can do, you can define different path area. So for example, you define this red area as the enter and exit point. Mm. This area is actually a sensitive area that some people can go. This is perhaps a washroom and this is perhaps some other thing. So you, you have these four different um, area that you feel that might be interesting and you want to see in each pass, what is the pattern of each pass? Does it start at red and then go at orange and etc.? And here you can see all these paths. These are all pass data that is, that is simplified using this method. method. If it start at green, then you have the green point first. And then if you go to red and stay at red, you have many red points. You can see like the different, you can then simplify the, the pass data into the different uh, interaction and you can see this kind of a uh, sequencing was uh, somewhat use have start in the blue and then go to the green area and th then go to the red area etc so here and oh, oh the black area is like the the, the past doesn't go into any area and with this kind of data you can like uh, write a code and have it looping back to all your data set and having all your data set simplified as this kind of abstraction. But before you, but to come up with this kind of abstraction, you really need to see into your data to, uh, to get this idea. And this is uh, what I believe how uh, JavaScript can work with Python. It's really when you use the very um, powerful expressness of JavaScript, look at some sample of your data and then try to ask the correct question, try to uh, ask some interesting question, using the question and looking back to your data set in a much larger scale. Um, one of the other visualization I want to show you is the um, vegetable visualization, mm -hmm. which has been previously done using our ggplot 2 package. And um, basically, you have all these uh, different kind of vegetable in Taiwan for the past 20 years. And the uh, uh, trade uh, information of these vegetable has been like uh, very well recorded. So you can see, for example, using R, you can use, you can ask what's the average price of each market, what's the average quantity of each market, 
and what's the uh, fluctuation in different months of the year. So for example here for the carrot data set you can see like in, se um, in July it actually it has the lowest quantity and uh, as well in winter you have the greater quantity. So this all kind of question you can ask uh, using this kind of uh, using using R and of course using a Python. But I want to show you about what you can do using interactive uh, JavaScript. So here is something we can do using uh, JavaScript. And uh, this uh, JavaScript uh, uh, still using different JS, but it's using like cross filter, one of the function of different JS. And this is the uh, uh, um, <coughs> facet of uh, Ida Ida name Maoto, uh, if you read Chinese. Um, so um, if you don't know what this is, let's look at this. <laughs> so this is <laughs> so actually I had Google all the graphs, so that's it's easier. So um, here you can see. Let me show you the data set first. The original data set looked like this. You have the different dates. You have the different market. So this is Taipei 1. And here you have uh, Kaohsiung. And you have the different type of, uh, uh, of this vegetable. So here, uh, here are the pot. And here are the bean. So the different part, Douleng uh, and Douzia, is a different part of, uh, of Mao Dou. And here you have the um, uh, price. So this is actually um, in, the, um, in the first of uh, uh, April, this is the um, this is the traded price of that day, and this is the traded quantity. So you have the, all this information, and you can imagine your information can be very high dimensional uh, in the sense that you, uh, it has many dimensions. You can add the weather dimension in it. You can add whether there is typhoon right now. So you can add many dimensions. So a good idea of representing this visually is using cross filter which is a bit of overwhelming at first, but uh, let me explain a bit. So here you have the different years. Um, the blue, the, the first row is uh, price, which is in blue. The second row is quantity, which is in orange. So uh, let me explain this chart first. So this chart is actually meaning the different years. So the average traded price in different years in uh, 2000 is this, and you can see in 2010, uh, model actually increased. This is a different uh, month of the year. So this is January, and this is December. And you can see the different pattern in, um, in price. So in April and in May, the price is actually lower because the quantity here now is actually higher. So you can see the relation between the quantity and the different uh, in price. Here is the <coughs> different market. So the Taipei uh, is the, the second market in Taipei, the first market in Taipei. And so you can see the price mm -hmm. in, of Mao Dou is higher in Kaohsiung, and uh, it's about the same in Taipei Yi, Taipei e. But actually, there's a lot more of uh, Mao Dou traded in Taipei Yi e than Taipei e. This is the different type of, uh, veg, uh, of Mao Dou. So you have Dou Jia, Dou Ren, and uh, import uh, Mao Dou. Uh, this is the price, this is the quantity. And over here is the over um, is year over price. So uh, one of the interesting thing when you have all these things visualized is you can notice some very interesting pattern. So for example, I don't know if you notice, but here, uh, so the different point mean the different uh, traded price in different markets. So you <coughs> here you can see that there's almost two kind of paths that is acting very similar one over the other. And that's kind of uh, interesting because you're wondering why there's two different price and having the same pattern over time. And using this graph, you, um, this graph is interactive, so you can check this. So for example, you want to see, uh, let me show how this graph works. Okay, uh, okay, so I think that's loading too much. Let me reload again. <coughs> um, okay, um, this seems to be, okay, I guess this is the problem we will always have with live demo that, uh, that something are not 
moving, let me check. Also, fair resource. <coughs> right. Okay, so this should be okay, but why this is not moving? Okay, uh, let me check another data set. Let's see, because I tested bef just before we have the talk and it was working fine. Okay, this is working fine. So um, again, we have <coughs> the same visualization from left to right. This is the different year, this is the different uh, months, this is the different market, and this is a different type. I'm now using the tomato data set. What you can do is, for example, you want to look what's the tomato like, for example, in 2000. So you can drag here, and you can see that uh, here the price is only uh, uh, showing the 2000 price. If you want to see other price, you can just uh, drag and drop here so you can see the different price area. You want to see, for example, the price in summer. So you can drag here and now you can see the price in summer. And you can drag here the price in spring. So it's showing the different data. Here one, you are interested to see the price in different markets. So for example, you only want to see Taipei 1. So you click on Taipei 1 and there's only Taipei 1. And this is everything together. And you can see the different type of tomato. So for example, this is uh, the uh, uh, new fan chia. The beef tomato has only, okay, this probably is, isn't a correct translation <laughs> anyway. But uh, uh, this kind of tomato has been only been traded after uh, after you can see uh, 2000. Before 2000, there was not this kind of uh, 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 new fan chia. You can see the different type of fan chia uh, here. <laughs> Um, one of the interesting graph here on the left is actually typhoon. So uh, we actually look back and what time does typhoon happen. And so the T here is when typhoon hit. And the plus five is after typhoon left, the five day after typhoon left. And the minus five is the five day before typhoon left. And the NA here means the average. So uh, without the typhoon at all. So you can see like for example for a uh, tomato, uh, what is the influence of typhoon uh, in after, for example, 2010? And you can check that uh, iPhone after typhoon, when typhoon hit, the price increased by a bit, but just a bit. And you can see what's the hit of different market. For, for example, you want to see 2010 and Taipei 1, so you click here and here. So here is the influence of uh, uh, Taipei 1 uh, after uh, 2010. You can also see after 2010, what's the influence of, uh, of the tomato in winter. So you have 2010 here, and you just have to add like winter. And this is all the, all the price are now reflecting the winter, and the quantity has been changed as well. So uh, with this view, you can see uh, many interesting <coughs> things. And one, uh, one of the things I want to show you is uh, this one. This is uh, using the data set of uh, Qingchong. Qingchong is like scallion. Uh, so for those of you who doesn't know what Qingchong look like, so it's like this. Uh, so you have the different scallion. Uh, so uh, the different scallion, you can see, uh, I was, is there any interesting thing you can see on this graph? So you can see here that the, the, the price actually changed periodically, which actually is reflected here. You can see the larger price is here. But this is actually a thing that is quite strange on this data set that you can see visually that is here. This is actually quite strange because uh, if you think of it, the schedule data set is changing every period. And that makes sense. You have, when you have this schedule, the price goes up. But here, within one market especially, the price of the scallion has been always the same. And that's very strange because everyone, in every market, the price has been changing. But in this especially market, the, the price has always been at this level. So what kind of uh, market is this? You can, for example, uh, choose, this is blue, so you choose the blue one. So you can see this is the Taizhou market. And the Taizhou market in the past, it has some change, but here, some of some of the transactions still have uh, uh, still have changed, but <coughs> some of the ch transaction is completely flat. So you can see maybe this is because a different type of scallion it has. So it is. You can see this is the Zichong type of scallion. The one of the type of scallion. If you want to, so it's actually this one. This is the Zichong. What Zichong look like? So Zichong in Taizhou market is actually very interesting. You can see in the past. 
uh, if you see all the mark, uh, you see all the market, all the ma all the zhichun actually change quite a bit, and it, uh, still it is the price is still changing, but uh, it's only in the Taizhou market that it used to be fluctuated. But since 2000, seem like uh, since like uh, after 2010, the price has been fixed to a very fixed level. Is uh, it is as well like within this market, people has a consensus on on the price we should trade on Zhichong, and this is very weird. So uh, I'm not here to trying to uh, persuade you that Scalio is very interesting. I'm trying to persuade you that. With interactive visualization, you can actually come up with some interesting question. For example, one of the questions that we just have is that we can write a program that actually look for uh, the vegetable price that's actually very fixed, as the, but should be like changing. And we can use this program to look back to all the data set to see how many kind of data match this kind of pattern. But how we can catch up with this pattern is, we, uh, but this pattern is so interesting that we may not think of it at first. When you look at the data, you might not come up with this pattern. It's only when you have a very expressive display that you can uh, very well interact, that you can come up with some interesting question uh, and then uh, do some data analysis. So uh, this is uh, Ching Chong, and um, before my talk, and then let me check. So I still have three minutes, and I want to have a quick show of the other, um, other pattern that I feel was interesting. So this is uh, corn, this is uh, Yumi. And uh, you can see like uh, with Yumi, uh, one of the, one of the interesting thing you can see from here is actually, uh, let me try. Um, hmm. You can select, again, you can select what's whole corn like look like in summer. Uh, you can see look like what's the corn look like after 2010. And uh, there's actually one of the interesting thing about corn in after 2010, year 2010, if it's like, uh, you can see here in the price that actually went, um, it actually isn't that much affected by typhoon. And you can see the different type of corn. You can see, for example, here the, the higher price is mostly imported corn. And um, you, can, you, can, you can explore. So, um, uh, and you can, here you can switch to other vegetable as well. So all these are, um, are in our life online, and you can find this link uh, in the head guide I just provided, uh, if you are interested. And I, uh, to recap my talk today, it's really like um, you have a very inter interactive, really help you to get a better understanding of your data set, and then coming up with more interesting questions that you can uh, then use for data analysis. So. Uh, that's basically my uh, the idea of my talk today. And um, I don't know if you have time. We still have one or two minutes, so I'm open to question if, if any. Hi. Uh, I would like to know more about how, how do you combine Python with the E3J database. Do you mean, because I just, uh, as it, as according to your talk, I think, I think, do you use Python to just for scrap data and and then you use the these three dot js to to display? Yeah. So uh, the question was, how do I use uh, 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 more about how do I use Python and D three? And so far, I'm only using Python intensively as a way of scrapping data and uh, uh, managing the data, but like. Uh, that's because I'm not that good in Python, and a lot more can be done using Python. For example, uh, one of the uh, one of the things you can do is like, for example, here we we actually saw some interesting pattern, right? Yeah. And you can you, you can call this interesting pattern uh, because here this only like very few data. And imagine you have a very large data set that is several gigabytes. You cannot use JavaScript to analyze the virtual by. So you must use some scripts such as Python. Mm -hmm. So you have a loop where you have this interesting insight of question. 
you code this inside the question, and you try to use Python to run against uh, your original huge data set. Mm -hmm. I haven't been able to fully do this yet, but I feel that this is uh, really much possible. Okay, thank you. Any other question? No? Okay, so um, thank you for your time.